All right, hey, this is Chuck from National Rock Review and <laughs> Life in Michigan. And I am here with Blue Snaggletooth. How's it going, guys? What's up? All right. So, um, why don't we go do some introductions? We'll start with you, Mike. Mike, drummer. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm the bass player. Casey, I play guitar. I'm Chris, and I sing and play guitar. All right. So, uh, guys, I wanted to ask you, so Blue, uh, the, um, your last album, Beyond Thule came out in November. It's, I think it's been doing really well. You guys have been getting lots of tours. Um, so, how's it been going? What's the fan reaction been like so far? Positive. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. People seem to really dig it. Cool. Um, so, I gotta ask, like, where did the, the whole Beyond Thule, Dimension Thule come from? Uh, well, uh, the drummer, the original drummer for Snaggletooth, uh -huh. he came up with the Dimension Thule idea. And Mike came up with the Beyond Thule idea. Cool. Um, it's, a drummer, it's a drummer thing. Drummer. It's a drummer, <laughs> drummer thing. Yeah. Thule is like, you know, means the end of the... the end yeah, of I looked the it up. I, I did a little Google on Thule. It was like the far north regions, you know, and shit. So, that's cool. There's a third part to this trilogy, but we'll save that for another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, on the album, what, what is the, the song that you guys like to play the most? And I'm, I'm sure it changes between each of you, so go ahead and rattle off which ones you got to like. You want to go first? Uh, I like kicking off with Reptiles. Cool. It's a good song. I enjoy all you see. I think Sleeping Mountain's just fun. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going ham. Sleeping Mountain. Sleeping Mountain. Because of the groove. Yeah. I was going to say, that's that's my favorite yeah, one out there. Yeah, just riff. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, is there any songs that you guys play live that are challenging to play? Like you can do it in the studio, but live it's not well, anymore. We play no. them enough times now <laughs> by this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's like second nature now. It kind of just depends on how many drinks or whatever. <laughs> show, maybe. All but right. There is an epic one that's coming up that uh, it's from kind of an incarnation of the older band that we still need to polish. So that one's that very one's challenging. Tough. Yeah. So yeah. It's gonna be an instrumental. Yeah, oh really? Yeah, and it's, it's called. Uh, it's pretty epic. It's called Last Voyage of Amra. All right. So yeah. Is that, are you guys going to record that or? Uh? Yeah, that'll be coming soon. out soon, yeah. Oh, cool. So, like, what else is coming up on the horizon? I think uh, you guys got a, a well, split with Bonehawk? Yeah, we've got a split, uh, not with Bonehawk, actually. Oh. It, that's been changed. Oh, all right. Um, just due to how things work, you know, yeah. bands get stuff done or whatever. Um, but we are doing a split on Ripple. It'll be coming out in the fall. Cool. And it should be awesome. Yeah, originally it was supposed to be sort of a showcasing Michigan thing, and yep. the uh, the guy at Ripple just decided that it was better to do uh, one Michigan band with a European band. Oh, so okay. Split us up. Makes cool. a lot more sense. Yeah, it's yeah. More, uh, it's, it's got more. Uh, got the, yeah. yeah, and the international flavor of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we we sell a lot of records overseas, so yeah. that's really cool. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's it's a chance for you know a European band to get some attention exposure over, over here, here. With us and then us to get attention over there. So do you guys anticipate that? There'll be any like touring like that? Would they come over here? You guys go over there? Anything like that? You think? You never know. I hope right. so. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're open to anything. At that that, point. that would be awesome. All right, cool. So, um, where did you guys record Beyond Thule? Where was that done at? Uh, Metro Thirty Seven with Kevin Sharp. Cool. Yeah. And so what was the process like? Do you guys record live, or did you each individually go in and record your stuff? Just try and track, by yeah. track. Yeah. Try and do well, as much live as we can. Yeah. You, you lay down the basic track live and take what you can from there, usually drums and bass, and then go just overdub from there and really add stuff to it. Make right. you know, like sauce. You know, drum <laughs> in the ingredients. Needs a little more guitar. Mix it up like some chili. Yeah. More compression. Yeah, I mean all the tracks are a little bit different. I mean yeah. there are parts of it that are completely live. Um, the middle section to uh, Amkara, uh, that was a first taker. Oh really? The whole middle section psychedelic part. Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Wow, that's, that's just great. Off the cuff and you know we kept what we originally laid down, so it's good. Cool. Cool. It's a little bit of everything. All right. So what's the uh, the approach to songwriting? Who do you guys all collaborate together? Is somebody like the main writer? How does it work? It's uh, like on the first album I wrote a lot of stuff and there was some collaboration. This time Casey wrote a lot of stuff and then we both wrote together and then when this lineup gelled we. We started writing together as a group. It's been really cool. Cool, cool, awesome. Do you? Um, how does the process work? Like, does one person like think of some kind of riff and go, "Hey, let's try this out"? Yeah, usually me or Casey comes up with a riff, and then Joe will help flesh that out. Mike comes up with his own drum parts. Who does the lyrics? You guys each uh, contribute. Usually, I do most of them, but Casey 
definitely contributes. Cool. And I can see everybody contributing in some. Point. Awesome. And yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it's yeah. been really cool. So you guys, um, I got to say, like out of all the bands that I've been seeing lately, have the best artwork. I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> I- I'm serious. Your albums, shirts, everything. As soon as I saw Blue Snaggletooth and I saw the shirt, I was like, holy cow, that is awesome. So who does this? Who does the artwork? Jeremy Wheeler. All right. That is awesome. Man. Yeah. Everything he does. He, yeah. He's a super silent dude. So. Yep. All right, cool. I'll have, to, I'll have to check him out. Yeah, Bang Media. Bang Media? Yep. All right. I actually, I think I did see him at the, um, there's a fall craft festival at the yep. Masonic Temple. I'm sure yep. he was, yeah. Yep. Was All right. He does all of our artwork pretty much. We have another friend of mine, Tony Farrow, who does a lot of stuff too, like flyers. The posters and stuff? Yeah, a lot of the different flyers. Cool. But the main guy is Jeremy Lewis. Cool. So when you guys were uh, kind of getting into music, what was your inspirations? Who, uh, who inspired you to want to play? jump around where do you want to start you go first <laughs> wow um i don't know i played a lot of different stuff when i was like a little kid like you do stuff for school and things like that yeah um, and i really like big band swing stuff back in the day and all I was right always like really rhythm driven and, yeah you know um back in the day i had a friend whose dad had a whole setup back in his basement and i just started noodling around on bass and just, you know that rhythm again you know right really get like that that beat going with it and, yeah just kind of started going with like swing beats in the beginning and cool you know, just kind of spawned from there <laughs> different stuff that's awesome. I guess I'll go next. By the time I was six, I had every Beatles record, and I was a huge Kiss fan. <laughs> so those, those were my two biggest right. influences. Beatles for recording and Fidelity, Kiss for the balls out rock and roll. Right. Slut rock. <laughs> Did you ever dress up like Peter Chris? I'm not a face painter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a double entendre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a face painter. <laughs> I was a huge KISS collector for a long time, so yeah. it's a little too close to home for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Casey? Uh, mostly my parents got me into pretty good music. They had really good taste, so my mom was always blasting you know, Neil Young and my dad Zappa and stuff like that. So oh. the combination of their taste kind of rubbed off on me. And yeah. I don't know. They got me a drum set at a really young age. and I don't know. Black Sabbath, stuff like that. Uh-huh. You know, cool. Rock and roll. Yeah, I had the same thing. My mom was always blasting Led Zeppelin too on the weekends and Jimi Hendrix and stuff. So awesome. We would sing Beatles songs on the way to school in kindergarten. <laughs> stuff like that. And cool. When I got older, the Misfits and Ramones and punk rock. You know, my right. friends were all in bands when I was like 13. They were a little older and they were in bands, and I was like, I'm, "That's what I'm doing." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> so, and then I just, you know, we all fall in love with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well... And now you, you're 20 and you're still playing. <laughs> seven years later. Right. <laughs> Me and Joe have been jamming together since we're like 15, yeah, 14. Yeah, something like that. So oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. We're always playing music together. Awesome. Yeah, I met him when... Uh, when he was still like drumming first day of high school for me we had this big welcome assembly and uh-huh. there was a band that played in the middle of the assembly and like the band was like you know it was all right but like right. the drummer had this like crazy foofy hair <laughs> like long curly ass hair right and, uh, and in the middle of like their song got up and did a drum solo where he actually like walked around the whole drum kit <laughs> i was like that dude's awesome and then, like, a little while later and we, yeah we ended up both started playing music together mm-hmm. it's been Awesome. Good, good that's everything. cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. All right. So I, I think I know the answer to this. Um, but like, I think we were talking earlier about the music scene now compared to what it used to be back in the heyday. It's a lot harder for bands to, to you know, even just sell an album. Um, so what is it about playing your music that keeps you in the game? That wants you, you know, that to go do the shows, to practice, and go through all that. It's too much fun it's not just to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lifestyle. There's no other yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's just something I gotta do. Right. Like, it's, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. You get kind of sucked into it that th- that thing, doing shows, practicing, writing songs, and then you just can't stop. <laughs> it's better than anything else. All right. I mean, yeah. some dudes like play softball or bowling league. Or yeah. Something. That's what we do. Yeah, that's cool. And do, do you feel like, um, do you feel any of that pressure, like, for, for right now, as far as um, trying to make it, or do you just have fun no. making the music? <laughs> no. All right. Make what? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. I'm happy when we sell 300 records. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Cool. 
All right. I'm happy when we're shipping records overseas. Yeah. yeah that's well, that's that's fun. Really good, I mean, right? yeah. I mean, I I gotta imagine that that is a good feeling to know that somebody digs your music and said, you know, because you play original music and so. Yeah, and like the, you said, in this day and age, you know, for somebody to find you on the internet and then order your stuff from like Finland or yeah. like the Great Britain or Spain or something. That's amazing. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I really appreciate it because yeah. we're just out here jamming and listening, you know? <laughs> right. Well, that's cool, man. All right. Um, so I, um, you know, my music tastes are all over the place, and a lot of people that, um, you know, are into National Rock Review are looking for new music. What would you guys recommend if somebody's, like, saying, hey, tell me something I sh you should listen to right now? Like, in terms of local bands? Doesn't matter. Local. Uh, could be old stuff, new stuff, whatever. What are you guys that are listening to Check that you think... Check out the new Bice Machine album. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's yeah. a good one. I've actually Bone heard Hawk's it. Album is fantastic. Bone Hawk. Bone Hawk. Beast in the Field. Cool. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, yeah. I don't know. If I can recommend <laughs> anything, it's going to be all way yeah. out in the left field. That's all right. It's throwing out there. Sharon Jones and the Dab Kings. All right. It's old school soul. Cool. It's great. Yeah. There's some new bands like Satan Satyrs. Those guys are pretty awesome. Those guys are like really a awesome. evil budgie. <laughs> and, um, cool. Yeah, Graveyard's fantastic. But oh, yeah. Bands like those are great. Aren't they playing with uh, Mastodon and band. Clutch? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to Columbus to see that. Oh, nice. Yeah, that'll be good. All right. Um, so, anyway. So, the, I, I actually like first saw you guys at FuzzFest last year. And that was the first time I ever heard of FuzzFest. Um, so, Chris, I think you actually put on FuzzFest. Is that correct? The brainchild. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I just kind of put that together. And, and, and so I guess, you know, tell us a little bit about what FuzzFest is. FuzzFest is, a, I call it like a celebration of Michigan rock and roll music in all its various forms. Uh -huh. That's just, a, that's just a, like a thing. But really it's just a bunch of bands, you know, guitar-oriented or fuzz oriented in some way, uh -huh. heavy in some way, droney, it can be shoegazy, it can be all kinds of different stuff, but as long as it's kind of rocking. Right. Um, three night festival at this year at the Blind Pig, last year was at Woodruff's. Cool. This year's at the Blind Pig, June 11th through the 13th. Awesome. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 11 bands each night, two stages, music never stops. Starts at 8.15, doors are at 8, get there for the first band. <laughs> awesome. So where are they going to have the second stage at the Pig? We're going to do it on the floor in front of the soundboard. We're, oh. I, I'm associated with this dance party, The Bang. Uh -huh. It's really fun. You should go. It's at every month at the Blind Pig. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, i got to do that. You know? Yeah. It's my job. Um, plug it. Plug it. Anyway. I wish I was associated with the dance party. <laughs> <laughs> Make your own. It yeah. can be. It can be. I set up the light show for him and, uh -huh. and uh, where we set up the lights for that, we're going to do the second stage. Oh, cool. All right. It's awesome. not going to be a stage, but there'll be a full PA, you know, yeah. there'll be a band on the floor. Yeah. So and, you get, and you guys are playing there, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any other bands you guys are excited to see? What size is playing? That's oh, Imperial Sun Crusher, those guys. Oh, yeah. 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 That's Imperial yeah. Sun Crusher. Right. They're fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Because that's the dudes that used to be in Boss Mustang, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Old boss Mustang. Yeah. Mountain awesome. Dance. Mach 2. Mountain <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Set him in. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, going to be crazy. Beast. And is Beast in the Field playing there? Yes, mm -hmm. their headliners. Holy cow. Night. Those guys are incredible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so That's your headliners are sell. Amino Acids on Thursday, Wolf oh. Eyes on Friday, and uh, Beast in the Field Saturday. Cool. And then there's, a, like I said, 11 bands every night, so I can't name them all. <laughs> Awesome. That sounds good, man. There's a lot. Bonehawks playing, Vice Machines playing, uh, a whole bunch of bands. Yeah. That'll be great. Yeah. Middle of June. Perfect. Yeah. In Ann Arbor. All right. Um, let's see. The last question I have for you guys is, um, this is something I started to do, make my own little uh, mark on interviews. What's your favorite breakfast food? Mm. Toaster strudels. All the <laughs> Burritos, breakfast tacos. Hippie hash. Hippie hash, all right. My wife makes these awesome Belgian waffles. Uh, uh, okay. it, so. With real maple syrup? Yeah, and with whipped cream and strawberries. Or awesome. Chocolate sprinkles. Cool. <laughs> sprinkles. <love. laughs> all right. Well, guys, I really appreciate you guys talking with me. Right on. Um, love the music. Looking forward to seeing you guys live again. So. Well,
looking forward to putting out some new music. Cool. Later this year. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Absolutely. Thanks. Yep.